Let's do a quick uh, chat here about pages 25, 26, and even page 27. We're gonna do this all in one video. Um, this isn't as bad as you think, and um, let's quick see how we would factor this. Is there a common factor, you always ask yourself this, is there a common factor I can take out of everything and six would come out of these two, but not this. But this is divisible by three. So I think I can take three out of everything and have two x squared plus seven x minus four, okay? And again, even as a teacher, I cannot skip this step and do it in my head. So you shouldn't either. You should write this out. Now that you see this, you can factor this to be two parentheses. So we can bring the three down. All right, so we have two x, we have x, and then we have to think about what two numbers multiplied together would give me four. It might be two times two, but um, that's gonna give me four, it could give me a six here. Uh, what if I do four and one? Uh, let's see, because 1 times 4 is 4, and I'm getting an 8 and a 1, and I can do 8 minus 1 to get 7. All right, so let's do this. Does this work? Outer, 8x, inner, negative 1x. Okay, so that gives me the 7x, and then negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Yay! Now we're not done. Notice this says equals 0. And maybe remember this from some other math that we've talked about before. If I have two variables like a times b equals zero, what do you know? Either a has to be zero, and a or zero times anything is zero, or I could have this be any number and b be zero. But the only way I can get zero is for one of these two factors to actually equal or be zero. So in this illustration here, look, I have a quantity times a quantity, and it has to equal zero. Now obviously three doesn't equal zero, so we, we can ignore the three, but I can say this, two x minus one has to equal zero, or x plus four has to equal zero. Now if I solve for x, two x equals one, so x equals a fraction, okay? And then over here, we can subtract the four from both sides and get negative four. So notice now I have two answers for x. I have solved this to solve for x. And the directions, that's, that's called finding the solution set. And it looks like they, in the, in the answer key, maybe they do it in, parent, in brackets like this, like a solution set one half comma negative four. <clears throat> Notice this is not parentheses. This is not represent an x and a y value. It's not a point on a graph. These are two different numbers that would satisfy this equation. And you, I challenge you, take, take negative four for instance and plug that in to both places here, solve this, and it should work out to be zero. Now, let's talk about page 27. This is called inequalities, and, and I, would, I would tend to say this is kind of like an enrichment lesson, okay? They have all of this explaining it, and then they have two problems for you to do, and then you turn the page and, oops, that was it! <laughs> Only two problems. I think they have one on the self-test, and I looked ahead just to peek, and they don't have any on the PACE test. So, here's my challenge for you. Do your best. Study the example on page 27, and then try to do those two problems on the bottom of page 27 by yourself. But if you get stuck, I would not feel at all bad asking your supervisor or your parent if you can sit down with the open score key and see how they did it and just try to logically follow the steps. It really is just a lot of algebra logic that you're kind of following through. So do your best to muddle through it, try to understand it, but um, I'm gonna encourage you with the fact that you don't have to totally master it and feel like I have to know this for the page test, okay? But it is gonna challenge our brain and try to handle some topics that are a little bit pushy, 
Um, even if we're not going to be held accountable for it on the test, that's okay. We're still good to push your brain. So try it. Study the example on page 27 and uh, do your best to master that. And we have one more concept in here that we'll do a video for, and that's page 28 and 29, division of polynomials.